Hi, welcome to the Book Chronicles. I wanted to do a quick coffee talk today. Shannon is not available right now. Leave a message at the beep. <laughs> I cracked myself up. Anyway, um, I wanted to let you know about some books that I had to... One I had to DNF and the other one I wasn't as fond of and I have receipts so it will be going back to the bookstore. The first book I thought I was really going to enjoy, I was so hyped about this book because it is an LGBTQIA plus read, so I thought, okay, we'll give this a try, right? So I picked up The Music of What Happens by Bill Kongsberg. It's about Max and Jordan, these two gentlemen who, Jordan helps Max with his food truck. Max's mom has an issue with gambling, and she, after the loss of her husband, Max's father, is trying to get over the grief by running the food truck that he used to own. So Jordan comes along to the food truck during the time that his mo mom, that Max's mom, is having a breakdown of sorts and talking about losing the house, losing everything they have because if they can't make this food truck work. So Jordan helps Max with his with the food truck and they sort of form a bond and it's about the relationship and whether or not they're going to be boyfriends or not. This book fell flat close to the end and as I was going through this book I kept thinking to myself, please pick up the pace. Please pick up the pace. Let's get some action going. Let's pick up the pace here. I know what you're trying to say. Let's go ahead and get to the point quicker if we can. That made me lose interest because I have a short attention span anyway. It's like the dog that's a squirrel, you know. I can be thrown off track very easily because of my NLVD, my nonverbal learning disorder, which is on the high uh, spectrum of autism. So if a book doesn't grab my attention and keep my attention, it's not going to be worth me reading. I know a lot of other readers feel the same way whether or not you have NLVD. I was a little disappointed in that respect. It wasn't a bad book. I mean, would recommend it for LGBTQ and there were some great points that were made regarding the LGBTQIA plus community. It does touch on the topic of rape also. So if you are sensitive to the subject of rape, then I would definitely go into this book with some caution. It just was so slow. And I hate to say that because I really wanted to love this book because it was about two young men falling in love and Jordan trying to help Max with the food truck and keep the business going when his mom is grieving and dealing with her own gambling addiction. So that was the first book. The second book was Dear Evan Hansen. I had to DNF this book because I get halfway through it and it's like, okay, I'd rather see the musical. The music is so much better. I mean, it's better with the music and everything. This is just a story. It's just, everything just kind of fell flat for me. So halfway, not even five chapters into the book, I was just like, okay, I'm done with this. The musical's much better. It's like Hamilton. I'd rather see the musical than read the book. I hope you all are having a good day. Jane and I wish you peace, love, books, and coffee, and many blessings, and we love you guys very much. Hi, welcome to the Book Chronicles. I'm Shannon. And I'm Melanie. <laughs> and this is another episode of Coffee Talk. Coffee Talk. 2.0, because Shannon's here today. And there's two books I would like to talk about today, um, both by the same author, Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I'll put them right here. First book we're going to talk about is the one I just finished last night and I absolutely loved is The Daisy Jones and the Six. Daisy. And Okay, I gave this book 4.5 stars, and let me tell you why I docked it a half a point. The third to the last, Aurora 1977 to 1979, 
The um, second Aurora so, in the chapter. The yeah. second Aurora chapter. And probably about half of that I started feeling like it was dragging some. No, that's actually the first Aurora chapter. I'm sorry. It was after the world tour. Yeah, so it's the first Aurora right. chapter. Right. I did feel like it was kind of dragging just a little bit. Not that it wasn't good. I found myself maybe starting to care less about the characters. Not that I didn't, but it just for me, I was like, I, I if I had not, I had to audiobook the rest of it. I literally, and Mel, poor Mel, had to listen to the rest of it no, again. No, I loved it. I, I loved it because it reminded me of Fleetwood Mac. Totally need to audiobook this if you start feeling like, I mean, I, I am probably one to like, physically read a book she's more of an audiobook person but this one I had to audiobook the rest of it or I might have I'm not saying I would have but I could possibly could have DNF'd the rest of it yeah, um, simply because but I'm glad I didn't because it did pick up and it's what it, it was just like it, it, it's just like that distinctive Taylor Jenkins read ending just took your heart away but I really liked it it follows this band called the six while Daisy Jones comes into the picture it goes through member has their own set of issues and then it goes through kind of like the relationship between Eddie or no Billy or Eddie and Billy who are brothers no yes uh, yes yes Eddie's, Eddie's Billy's brother it goes through the relationship no between... Graham is Eddie's but brother Graham and Eddie. Right. It goes through the relationship between... Uh, Graham and Billy, I'm sorry. Daisy and Billy. Uh-huh. Graham and Billy. And okay. you got you got Camilla, which I absolutely uh, love. By the end, she was by favorite. far my favorite character. Yes, yes. I'd read the book just for I'm Camilla. not going to spoil why, because that would spoil the book oh, for yes, you. But... Oh, but... Yeah. But it, it's such a, a good book. It, it really is. It's such a good book. Um, I really enjoyed it. I don't want to spoil it for you, but I definitely want to say this. I do recommend that you have the audiobook on hand, just in case you do feel like you're starting to, like, it's not that it's boring. It's not boring. No, it's, just, it's not boring. It, it's just part of it. If that particular chapter did drag just a tad, not too much, but just a tad. So I def definitely recommend you have the audiobook on hand, just in case audiobook booking it the whole way through. Now we did interview format, mm -hmm. and like, would, it be, a, would it be a spoiler to tell who? Yeah, it would. I'm not going to tell you who is being interview, who the interviewer is. Melanie going to play a part. Hopefully, you can hear that. This is Honeycomb. Honeycomb was probably one of their biggest hits. Yeah, one of them. In a lot of the music, Billy, he's very influential in the band. He's like the one that wants to control the direction of the band. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the music he he puts his heart and soul to, but is how he reflects on how he feels about Camilla. But this is Honeycomb that's playing. The groupie, Daisy Jones. And here, here is the audiobook. Daisy Jones was born in 1951 and grew up in the Hollywood Hills of Los Angeles, California. Let's play a few parts. The daughter of Frank Jones, right. the well-known British painter, and Leanne Lefebvre, a French model, Daisy started to make a name for herself in the late 60s as a young teenager on the Sunset Strip. It's a full a cast audiobook. Biographer, author so, of Daisy Jones. Here is what is so cap. Yeah, and so there is a full book audio. You pack. got Jennifer Beals. You got Benjamin Bratt. So it's, I definitely recommend the audio book. Either way, I, I think you'll really enjoy this book. Pretty um, much. Do you have anything else to say about Daisy Jones? Well, I just thought that the, for Camilla alone, the book is worth reading. The book oh yeah, you'll definitely fall in love with Camilla. I believe she. She, even though the spotlight is on Daisy, she, Camilla is my. She's the star. In my she's opinion. the star. Yeah. That's that's who I feel it. The band basically this author comes in comes into play wants to write a, a memoir or biography about the whole band, which is likely wouldn't matter because there's 
Christine McVeigh, yeah. uh, who is the keyboardist. Even the description of what Daisy wears down to the white dress, the hoop earrings. It's like Stevie it, Nicks. It, you, you, you totally picture Stevie Nicks. And the keyboardist, Karen, reminds me of Christine McVeigh. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I think that's <laughs> what Miss Reed's inspiration come from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Came Taylor from. Jenkins Reed's. She, I, I because you, you totally think of Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there is on Spotify, Heather from the Bookables, I mentioned Spotify has a playlist of Daisy Jones and the Six, and I believe I did mention that in the last video. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> However, that, to me, that was an amazing book. And then Evelyn Hugo was amazing. You yeah. finished Evelyn Hugo finally. <laughs> yeah, and I wanted to go ahead and talk about Evelyn Hugo. And... I don't get me wrong. I enjoy Daisy Jones, but I believe I I fell in love more with the Evelyn Hugo book. Simply, it follows a nineteen fifties fifties actress. She is Cuban, Scarlet, of Hollywood, <clears throat> like Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah, it's a Marilyn Monroe vibe, and and which, Elizabeth Taylor and Lucille Ball vibe, all right, up in one. And I strongly recommend... Now, these are not YA books. These are mm-hmm. adult mm-hmm. contemporary books, which I truly love. No, keep in mind, they are adult books, so they're a lot more... Um, especially in Daisy Jones, there's a lot of drug use. So, it, keep in mind, this is the 70s, so if you know anything about the 70s, the, they did drugs freely. And if you are sensitive to that topic, I would steer right. clear of that book, unfortunately, for that reason. And then Evelyn, Evelyn Hugo, though, was a beautiful story. I just, I can't say a whole lot about it because it would spoil it, but I, these two books I strongly recommend. I really love Taylor Jenkins Reads as an author. She has definitely became one of my favorite authors. Vastly becoming my favorite author. I mean, it's Angie Thomas, Rainbow Rowell, and Taylor Jenkins Reed mm-hmm. right there, but Angie Thomas is the tops. Taylor Jenkins, well... Rainbow Row and then Taylor Jenkins Reid. Although they're neck and neck right now because depending on what else Taylor Jenkins Reid puts out, I might like her better than Rainbow Row. As a matter of fact, isn't Ra- Rainbow Row coming up with a new book that I am excited about? Mm-hmm. Caddy Tastic. The She's sequel excited. to Carry, Carry on, on by Rainbow Row, which is called Wayward Son. Yeah, right? Wayward Son. And so, so yeah, and I, I got to get on that Rainbow Rowell train myself. And, oh, I love fangirl, but but, uh, but you know me, I, I've got a lot of books going. I <clears throat> I have a whole TBR shelf full of books and that I've started or want to start. Because we have no chill. I have no chill. <laughs> the only thing I got left to talk about, basically, is what I'm currently reading. I did, like, Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones is the only, are the only two books that I finished this month. Mm-hmm. I would say, mm-hmm. but it were in March. Mm-hmm. You were in March. It's. I'm trying to think. The twenty third, fourth of March, Sunday. Yeah, I need to get busy. According to my Goodreads, yeah, those are the only two books that. I mean, I've been reading other books, but that I've actually finished. I just there is another book that I think Mel's excited that I, I'm giving a second chance to. I DNF this the first time. Not that it wasn't good, I think, it, because I was really wasn't in the mood for it. I'm actually enjoying it. I read some a little bit last night after I finished Daisy Jones before I went to sleep, but I'm giving Wonder Woman a second chance. And, I, so and I had to get the paperback, because look, it says DC Icons on the side. <laughs> but this is like my copy. I am... 102 pages in, and I'm actually liking it this time around, because I think I'm actually in the mood for it. But this is following Diana. She meets this, and I think we did a whole live show on this book. I believe I wasn't really did. into it because I didn't, I, of course, I DNF'd it, but this is following, because this was actually one of the book club books, wasn't it? For the Butterfly Book For club last year for Superhero. Mm-hmm. You weren't in the mood for it, and I finished right. the book, and I couldn't talk about the book because you hadn't finished it. <laughs> but I'm reading it, and it follows Diana, of course you know who is Wonder Woman, and she um, rescues this girl, Ari. They go back to the, the New mis- York. Yeah, they go. She lives from. The I've just gotten to back to the part where they just got to New York, and it's quite humorous. Some <laughs> it of is the, funny. Some that of the part. dialogue between when um, she first comes to New York. That is right. So funny. Oh my god. 
right. But that's what I'm reading now. I was buddy reading Cersei with Melissa. I kind of put that down. I'm a mood reader, so I could change. Like, I'll read this for about an hour and then want to read something else. That's just the life of a mood reader, but that's what I have. I'm going to go let Mel. I Mel. finished a, co a cozy mystery by Ellie Ale Alexander. It's from the Bake Shop Mystery Series. It's the first in the series. It's called Meet, Meet Your Baker. Juliet Capshaw Montague. <laughs> she goes by Jules because she was made fun of in culinary school because of her name. He, the culinary oh. chef teacher would say, Romeo, Romeo, Wilfro, art thou Romeo? <laughs> because, so she said, I'm shortening my name to Jules. And she lives in a, a town called Ashland, Oregon, which is a small town. If you don't know much about Cozy Mysteries, they take place in these small towns. So she's new to town. She got into a bad breakup with her husband. She was a chef on, a pastry chef on this cruise line. So she has to get used to working in the bake shop with her mom and one of the customers that comes in that is a theater, pay, well, she is the star of the, sh the Hamlet show, that the production that's going on in this small town in the, the community theater. She is murdered, and they have to figure out who the murderer is. <laughs> I won't go into any more about that because I don't want to mess with the book. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But it is cute. It is adorable read. Uh, I love... The Sherlock Holmes kind of mystery read vibes and everything. Mm -hmm. and I did tell you earlier in this video two books that I had trouble with. One was the music of what happens. However, I might do a second chance video and do give this book a second yeah, chance. Yeah, I mean, I'm giving Wonder Woman a second chance. I mean, there's some books you, you, you may... I mean, it's not that you don't like them, even if you DNF them, but... You may just not be in the mood for them. Well, I didn't DNF this book. I actually read it, but I might reread the book just for a second chance to right. see if I can actually raise my star rating on the book and how I felt about the book because it kind of dragged. There was... It, the book needed to be truncated. Mm -hmm. it, the book just went on and on and on. So anyway, I did talk to you when I was by myself over by the bookshelf. I told you about that book. <laughs> and basically, yeah, be thinking about me and your thoughts and prayers. I had an MRI. Uh, we didn't know what was going on. It's not a tumor. I don't have a tumor. So thankfully, um, the nurse did call back and say that there was no tumor found. But there is something go else going on. We're not exactly sure what it is. I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to be a big issue. But we did find that out, so thankfully we do know a little bit of what's going on, but the doctor may want to see me, or we don't know. Other than that, I, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Anything else you wanted to mention? Uh, not that I'm... It's spring. It's springtime. The weather is actually getting up to the 70s here, so... We know. didn't do a lot of vlogging this this weekend because my mother's here because she's yeah and we, got, we were getting a little we yesterday we're kind of busy we got a lot done that we needed to get taken care of like taxes and uh dealing with the mri and wondering what and the heck is going on with with my medical we were chain you know change the litter boxes like try to come up with a better place to keep the litter box and cleaned them out took them in walk scrubbed them and it was that time to do that yeah mom's still here she'll probably go back tomorrow uh well Monday. she said she monday gonna, she said she was gonna leave monday or tuesday yeah but she's been worried sick about me so she came down and to, to be with me and shannon for the mri which i really appreciate mom and shannon being there for me for the the mri so but yeah, it's just been a whirlwind of things. So we've we've had mom here, and I don't like to vlog with mom here because I don't think mom would appreciate being in any of the vlogs. And she doesn't really understand the whole booktube thing. No, I don't think so. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this little talk. I hope you, if you've read Evelyn Hugo or Daisy Jones and the Six, please put. We want to know your your thoughts on it. Yeah, leave a leave a comment down below. Please like, subscribe, comment. Favorite, click the bell icon, yeah, to and receive so, notifications, right? And then follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll put the handles 
of us. Um, I hope you've had a great reading weekend. I'm Melanie. And I'm Shannon. And peace, love, books, and coffee. And many, many blessings, guys. Bye. Bye.